Uh, welcome. This is uh, me and Eric Fix project. He's my keyboard man for today. All right. So this is about the Guggenheim and the falling water. Click it. All right. Have you ever wondered how the balcony for falling water seems to just float in midair? <laughs> or have you ever wondered right over here? Seeing how the spiral just endlessly goes on at the Guggenheim. We want to show you how the exotic and unique parts of these two structures that make Frank Lord Wright's Falling Water and Guggenheim are different than many other pieces of architecture. Um, these parts leave some people in awe about how they are created. Uh, when I first learned about these in history of art, uh, I didn't really know how he could actually make this just float. I, you'll see other pictures. Uh, later in the slide to see how far it actually extends. But we just want you to know how these things are constructed and how they are able to look the way they do. Okay, there's a quarter mile reinforced concrete ramp that climbs six stories in the Guggenheim. Right though, at that geometry was uh, basic building blocks to nature. Uh, he really thought more about curves, triangles, linear lines, stuff like that you find in nature, but it's more about based in math. And uh, each level has columns that hold the, hold the ramps up. All right, if you can zoom in, I can show you the geometry and the spirals. Okay, so as you can see over here, there's lots of curves that he wanted to implement within the building structure. And then uh, once in a while, you'll see a couple of curved triangles that he liked to use. Okay, if you go over to the spirals, you can see how it's just endlessly going to find the bottom. Uh, the way you go up is the elevator right here, and it goes all the way up, and then you start on the seventh floor. Uh, next picture, you can see the columns. All right, zoom in. Uh, it's uh, about four of these long columns along the Guggenheim that holds each of the ramps together, so they won't, so they can be stable. Uh, and I want to end with this quote because it really showed how he really like pioneered for later uh, other covers. Wright's buildings made it socially and culturally acceptable for an architect to design a highly expressive, intensely personal museum. In the sense, almost every museum of our time is the child of the Guggenheim. Quote by Goldberg. Now I'm hand it over to my man Fick. Now I'm going to talk to you guys about uh, Frank Lloyd Wright's Falling Water. Um, Wright designed the structure to be built into a hillside and also on top of a river, which hence the name Falling Water. You can see a waterfall um, right beneath the, uh, the actual um, house. And he built it as a, uh, a cantilevered structure since you can see all these overhangs, those are the cantilevers um, because he didn't have that much room to actually build the structure so he decided to uh, maximize the, uh, the amount of space that he could that he had using um, cantilevers. Uh, for those of you who do not know what a cantilever is it's simply a, um, a beam that holds up um, a structure on one side and on the other side, it does not have anything uh, holding it, which just makes it look like it's floating in midair. Um, and in the case of falling water, Wright and his team used sort of like upside down shaped beams, and they uh, integrated a uh, concrete slab around that, which um, formed the ceiling of the space below, and also for the, the floor above. Now here you can see, uh, these are actually two pictures of the same balcony. This part right here is um, actually this part right here. And you can just see how the, uh, the, um, the T-shaped beams are used. So here's the, um, the base of the T, and here is where the, uh, the cross of the T would be. And down here, it's just another angle. Here is where the, the base of the T would be, and here is where the, uh, the T would cross. So that just really makes it look like it's floating in midair and 
it's all suspended from um, down here in the base of the T. Just a few um, uh, public and critic reactions to uh, what people thought about falling water. Here's a, um, a quote I found in a magazine. They said, um, if through light and sound and structure, falling water evokes the feeling of existing in the unspoiled American wilderness, Everything else about everything else about it is unmistakably modern. The house is a marvel 20th century technology. It's a marvel of 20th century technology, and that just shows you um, how big of an impact this structure uh, had on um, the rest of uh, or the the architecture that comes that has come later into the 21st century. Um, but also, there were some bad uh, reactions to. Um, falling water and many uh, many critics said that uh, that the structure is not sturdily built and it's uh, it would really be uh, falling apart if not for all the reconstruction that uh, has been done. We're going to send it over to Eugene for a little wrap up. All right. Well basically the Guggenheim is pretty much one of like the leading for any marvel you've seen because he actually took the time to think about something that many people weren't doing back in like the early 1900s. People were trying to stick pretty much uh, safe as you can say. And then he just took it out of the box with this viral thing that critics pretty much didn't like. But, new computer. It's time to wrap it up on now on falling water. Um, we can just go back and review some of the uh, the parts here. So remember that uh, falling water is a um, a cantilevered structure, and uh, it's built on a hillside and also on top of a river. Cantilever is um a beam or structural framework fixed on one end and free on the other uh, and Wright used uh, the, this uh, technique um, in the whole whole structure really and just surrounded every and surrounded t-shaped beams with a concrete slab and here's a few pictures of the um, the um, cantilevers themselves and uh, I just want to repeat um, what we want you guys to take away from this. Really, just want to wanted to be able to show you guys uh, the uh, how exotic and unique Frank Lloyd Wright structures really were, and how they um, set themselves apart from other architecture that were that was seen around that time, and how they uh, they led to um, innovations for how architecture is made today. Thanks. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, we'll and, we have to thank our sponsors, iNation. Remember, check it out.